What is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with a technical analysis here. We have Luke Herring, a high school junior, throwing the weight. He sent me a couple videos of him throwing hammer, a video of him throwing weight. I think he says he's around 155 in hammer and 62, or sorry, 52 in weight. Maybe it's 55. But um, either way, yeah, took a look at all your videos, Luke, and I'm excited to help you out because I think we can make some good adjustments. You said you've been a little bit stagnant, a little bit stale. You haven't made any progress in a couple months, so that's what I'm here to do, man. I'm here to get you some new ideas to work with. So um, <clears throat> before we get into today's video, if anybody else is watching this and you yourself feel like your training has been stagnant, you haven't seen any progress over the past weeks or months or whatever, I'm your man. Hit me up. Go to my website. GripMyRip.co. Sign up for an online technical analysis. Sign up for some online throws coaching. Sign up for some online programming. I can write you a program giving you specific drills to fix your technique. I think it'd be lovely. You'd get better, and I'd get to help you get better, which I love. I love helping people out. So, like I said, if you're interested, go check out my website, GripMyRip.co. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. So let's take a look at Luke's throw. Um, as I was watching this, I was like, he looks familiar. Like, what it, what it, what it, not, not, uh, physically, or, or you know, I, I, not like I know this man, but te technically, that entry in that first turn looks very reminiscent. I was like, oh, I've been working on a video doing a technical analysis of your CD. I was like, that, uh, first turn, that entry looks kind of reminiscent of Sadiq. So... And I will talk about if that's a good thing or a bad thing in this video. And then when I release my next video, you'll have a full example or a full explanation of why he maybe does those things. If it's good and if you should do it. But, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so let's actually start breaking it down. So you're starting uh, what would I assume I would be square, you know, feet even, back of the circle. Zero would be right between your legs uh, as you start out. You bring the hammer across the body. Like I said, I see this a lot with people nowadays. They tend to bring the hammer around from, like, let's say, their right side to their left side instead of thinking about the hammer is behind you. Bring the ball forwards towards zero. So that widens the orbit. And first off, you can always have your hands a little bit wider out to the right as well. But... Um, bringing the ball from the back to the front, winding it forwards, and guess what? As long as you don't move, if you don't, you know, sacrifice posture or anything crazy, the ball's going to go around that left side. Um, so, think about winding those hands a little bit forwards instead of, like I said, winding right to left as you're doing right here. All right, because then you see as your shoulders open up, your shoulders are opened up past zero right now. Your head's back at zero maybe even a little bit back behind zero, which is good, but your shoulders are opening up a lot, uh, and we'll see how that affects the rest of the throw. And you can see the ball doesn't really start to get some connection on it. Eh, maybe a little bit here, but you can see the ball's kind of dropping on you. Uh, in the winds, with this sort of uh, static start on the right side, you're not going to get a ton of tension on this first wind, but that's fine. Uh, and then as you go around, try to connect again. You can see you're flowing with the hammer pretty well. It looks like you do have some natural flow, so that's good. you got a bright future, perhaps, in the hammer throw. Um, and then you start to hear your hands dropping in naturally with the ball. That toe board kind of sketches me out, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, and you can see you're opening up pretty well. So despite, like I said, those shoulders being almost faced, let's say, 45 after zero, you do a good job of turning back, opening up, connecting early. As you can see, your shoulders are turned almost back towards 270, maybe a little bit before. Your long left side is good there. Like I said, natural drop in the hands, connecting with the ball. Now you're starting to see you get some tension on it. You can see the line from this left shoulder through the left arm, through the ball, through the wire, all kind of in the straight line. So you're starting to get some tension. There's no unnecessary drop. Um, but then it's kind of the same thing, as I said in the previous turn. Shoulders open up to zero. <clears throat> and then do a better job here of not opening up as much. They open up to zero, but they don't open up past zero quite as much. And then you can see as the ball passes. But there's still a little bit of like that left to right motion where you can see your hands kind of come outside this left, uh, this left side of the body. 
hands come on outside that left side, that left foot. Um, but then you do a good job opening up well once again. Looks like you're getting some good tension on it through that left side, uh, through the legs. Looks pretty good. But then you do, like I said, so this is what is reminiscent of Yuri Sadiq, the world record holder. You open up, connect pretty well, and then you can see you start to really sit down aggressively, really, like very aggressively, as you can see. As soon as the ball kind of comes off of its high point, you start to sink down, sink down, and sink down. And then you continue to sink down all the way until right about there. Like I said, very low, very sitting back sort of motion. Like I said, this is very Yuri Sadiq esque. And it works for Yuri Sadiq because he's the world record holder and he's been throwing for a while, you know, when he was at his prime. Not saying that it can't work for you, but. Uh, yeah, let, let's work through this a little bit, but um, you're just sinking the hips back and down a lot, and then you're kind of uh, forcing the orbit low around the left. Um, <clears throat> so um, what I would say is, because I myself have done a little bit of this kind of sinking down, sitting back with the hips sort of thing uh, in my time, uh, and it does work if, as long as you don't do it too much. And then I think the biggest thing is, uh, how stable is the left side and then how connected is the right side as the ball goes around the left so we will look at that so not not uh, condemning this not saying you can't do it but uh, you just got to be wary of how it affects the throw uh, but good left side connection right side's behind the ball uh, your head leads it a little bit as you go through zero pretty patient let's see the left side left shoulder out over that left foot's good with that heel turn uh, you're going to have this knee extending back a little bit more but yeah like I said the hips are just very far back um, which just complicates things I guess it's not wrong it's just complicated uh, and hammers one of those things where the more simple things can be it's probably going to be better um, but stable left side your right side is turning with it so your right foot's turning pretty well left side's turning pretty well like I said very pitched forward you can see your chest your torso angle from the hips up to the shoulder is very tilted forwards um, and then it'll just be interesting to see. So, like, from here, what do you do with it? And you can see there is a little bit of pulling back towards the end, kind of shortening the orbit, or even maybe kind of forcing the hands down, where you see, as the ball goes around the left, you can see shoulders up here, hands pulling down. And then if you look at this frame right here, you can't see where the ball is at, but you can see the wire. You can see the wire is pretty much flat, maybe a little bit, you know, below flat, but almost straight out where you can see the hands or the shoulders to the hands there's this little kind of angle downwards um, where you're kind of forcing the hands down a little bit like I said it looks like you're forcing that orbit down around the left a little bit and then with that what goes down must come up so you're going to see I think probably at least how the rest of your throw looks you, you, basically when I look at your full throw I see how uh, the uh, high point is very far off to what would be the left sector line um, and I think when you kind of force the hands down around the left, that's kind of what is going to happen. Like I said, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when you force the hands down around the left, they're going to go up on the right side of the throw, uh, or like I said, towards the left sector line. Um, but you're doing a good job turning with it, but there is a little bit of this left side pulling back just a little bit. You can see towards the end, it looks like you're uh, just a little bit over rotation. Like I said, it all kind of comes from that very initial start of the throw where you bring you're bringing the hands uh, across the body rather than forwards out you know tangentially towards or from 270 um, like i said so you're kind of pulling this left side open it up a little bit and you can see your rotation you're already kind of rotating and kind of setting the throw up to be down this left sector line um, but you're doing a good job turning with it and now you see like i said what goes down must come up so you sink down force the hands down, and then in uh, single support. And you're nice and patient here. Your right foot comes off just after 90. Um, but you see you start to rise up now. You can see it in the, the shoulders come up, your hips come up. And then when you go to step, your high point is around here in this turn. But then you can see this left leg kind of straightening it out straightening out a little bit like so you're popping up on that left side a little bit you can see it's in this few frames right here you pop up and then when you go to catch then you start to sink again 
So you're sinking with the ball. You need to be kind of opposite of the ball. When the ball is going down, you need to be kind of not necessarily standing up, you need to be resisting the force. And when the ball goes up, you need to be resisting the force in the sense of kind of sitting down. If you try to stay one level with the hips, um, it'll do it naturally, where if you try to, in this situation where you're rising with the ball and then sinking with the ball, it uh, creates just a little bit of disconnection and you lose a little bit of tension. Um, and then, like I said, with this very little bit of rotation and rise with that left side, you're kind of shortening the orbit from, let's say, 90 to 180, where you want to feel the ball grow kind of down this uh, right sector line. I think that might be a good cue for you is trying to feel the ball stretch down the right sector line and then stepping forward to towards it instead of kind of kind of stepping around like you are here. Like I said, there's just a little bit of rotation, a little shortening of the orbit. Um, but you catch relatively stable position here. You see your knees over your heel. Not a bad thing, um, at least in this first turn. But like I said, same sort of thing. The hands look a little bit down, a little bit forced. Um, the left heel grounds. Relatively stable, but you can see the hips are kind of turning ahead of the ball. The hips are kind of, uh, when the ball's at zero, the hips are pointed in this direction, 30, 45 degrees after zero. Pretty stable with that left side, but you can see that low point is starting to kind of set itself up. Uh, you want to kind of keep your hips square to zero when the ball's at zero. Uh, you're just a little bit ahead of it. So as the ball goes around the left, you can see the kind of same thing here. The hands are kind of down around the left. And then this position right here, shoulders high, this angle down to the hands is a little bit low, ball kind of low around the left. And then this position just looks a little odd to me. Um, but that right side's turning with it really well. You're staying really connected. Uh, you get a little wide with that right leg. And then you get a little bit kind of, uh, I think they call it a cowboy leg, I've heard it called. Um, but just a little bit wide. And then same sort of thing. You'd start to see, like I said, that low point, even though it is kind of here, it looks like it's kind of forced down just after zero. When the low point shifts after zero, things kind of tend to go wrong. You can kind of see the same thing here. You kind of rise up, and then you start to see that high point going down that left sector line. All right. And then when you go to catch, you get wider. Your body is like, oh, I feel out of whack. I'm off balance. How do I catch myself? All right. So you widen that base a little bit. And you actually end up kind of over rotating a little bit with that right foot. You catch a little bit later. So there's not a ton of stability or tension in the body. So from there, that left side's probably going to pull a little bit more. We shall see. Yeah, you can start to see that left side turning, pulling back. And then you see the same thing the hips kind of leading the throw, the lower body leading the throw a little bit. You have a very interesting throw. Not too many people do that normally. It's that shoulder or the head or the upper body that's leading everything. But it looks like your hips are kind of starting everything out. And then your shoulders just kind of follow. And you kind of see the same thing. Your low point gets past zero. And then you cut, you try to work back on the ball. And you have to keep that low point kind of square to zero. If it gets out in front of you past zero, then you're kind of working back towards the left sector line instead of working back towards 180. And then the orbit shortens around the left. And you can see your uh, orbit out to what would be the left side towards 90 is here in this turn when, as we saw in the entry, it was out. So you're shortening the orbit very much around the left. Right side turns with it pretty good. You're losing a little bit of direction here. Like you're trying to work towards 180, it looks like, but then the ball's going down the left sector line. So there's that disconnection. Wide right leg again. And then you start to see the ball stretching towards what would be, you know, 250, 245, whatever you want to say, 225. And then you're stepping towards the ball there. You over rotate, you get really wide in the legs. Um, to try to keep your balance, keep some stability, and then you catch kind of even later where the ball is now past 270. And then you go to pull and work back, and you see you're really getting back on the ball. You can see where do you throw your head to. Your head throws back towards 270. It's like if you were trying to throw towards 270 right now, that'd be pretty good, but we want to throw straight out. So you're really pulling that left side, really aggressive left side pull here. Like I said, Yuri Sadiq asked a little bit. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not, not the most ideal, but like I said, you got some potential. You're only in junior high school, so you got some good looking things. Uh, if we went back to the start of the video, what would I have you work on? Like I said, first thing, wind the ball forwards instead of right to left. So back to front rather than right to left. And then from there. Try to relax a little bit. You have a good relaxed right side of your wind, but then on the left, like I said, in the entry, 
you kind of, like I said, it looks like you force the hands down a little bit. All right, maybe try not sitting down so much in the in the hips either. I don't know, just just a thought, something to play with. But the big thing is getting the ball long around the left and feeling the ball kind of stretch towards that right sector line and stepping forward towards it. Um, that'll fix a lot of things in your throw because, like I said, that orbit just gets really shorter on the left. And you have the tendency, I guess you do kind of lead it in entry a little bit if you look at your head, look at the shoulder. Uh, let the ball go. Let the ball go left, long left, stretch towards the sector, and then just step towards it. And then try to stay down, like I said. Um, with the dramatic sit in the entry, that up and down motion kind of creates some instability. And Raziri Sadiq, he's a master of the event. He could do that. It'll work for him. For beginners, um, it's a lot harder. I'll just say that. And then, yeah, just keep in mind you want to work front to back in the throw. Not It's not rotational. It looks rotational, but it is not rotational. It is a linear event with a rotation aspect secondary towards that linear movement. You want to go forwards front to back through the circle. So. But like I said, fixing that orbit long around the left and stretch on the right sector line should clear a lot of things up for you. So, Luke, this is the longest technical analysis I've done in a while. So, uh, like I said, you have a very unique looking throw compared to most people uh, that I review, but in a good way. It's, a, it's refreshing. It's a change of pace. So, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If anybody else out there would like any online coaching services, go check out my website, gripandrip.co. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day. I will see you guys later.